So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Let's okay, get, get the party started. Okay. <laughs> because here we have fun giving out, <clears throat> excuse me, financial information. And I am your uh, co-host, Darlene Jenkins, and my other co-host, Dr. Rita B. Rowland. Dr. Rita B. Rowland. And this is being brought to you by our firm, Affordable Benefit Solutions, where we always keep you up on what's happening and what's now. So Financial Fed Friday, for those of you just joining us for the first time today, this is a webinar that we do on the first and third Friday of each month, and we host it at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. But guess what? We're also broadcasting live on Facebook simultaneously as we're on here where you talk and we talk back. And the whole purpose of the Financial Fed Friday is just that we help you pull back the curtains on uh, your benefits you have through the government, and we also give you some of the best investment uh, alternatives and just keep you up to date on what's happening right now that's relevant to your financial goals and leading you to your financial destination. If you want to uh, be on here live, if you're watching us right now on YouTube, you can register to be here with us at uh, Rita Bailey, Rita B. Roland events.com. For those of you on the phone, thank you for joining us. Uh, it's Rita B. Roland, and that's R O L A N D events.com. Of course, you can find us on Facebook at Your AB Solutions, and you can look for us on YouTube. And if you're on YouTube and you're watching us right now, please make sure you give us the thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. And if you're on here, or you're watching us on Facebook, welcome Facebook, because you're welcome here. Please go to our YouTube channel and make sure you uh, like and subscribe there as well. And Rita, we haven't done this in a while, but if you're on here right now, please check in and let us know where you are watching us from, because we know you join us from all over the country. And Rita, I'm gonna be excited when we get someone from overseas because on YouTube, I see people watch us overseas. So check in right now, Rita, and let me know where people are watching us from. And I'm Absolutely. just so you just let me know. Now the whole well, purpose first of all, first of all, before we go any further, the song you welcome that you heard, just want to give a shout out to my husband. That's a song he wrote like 25 years ago with a band when he was with the Sugar Hill Gang under the Positive Force band. So that's his music. So just a shout out. To my baby, I'm sorry. That was just a shameless plug. Oh, Go ahead, Dolly. No, 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 honey. You have to give a, a shameless plug or a plug to your hubby. Absolutely. So now back to the regularly scheduled program of Financial Fair Friday. The purpose of Financial Fair Friday is just to help you get an understanding of not only your benefits, but your money. And something else we help you get an understanding of is your money personality. If you have not gone back and watched the video at the beginning of the year where we went over your money personality because our money personality actually drives all of these things that we talk about, your spending habits, how you view money. And then after we help you understand all of those things, your Financial Fed Friday team is here to help and support and offer solutions that will enable you to reach your financial destination. And that's what we want to do. So, before we dive into the information, I just want to let you know that the information that you're going to hear on here is going to be generic in approach. It's great information, but it's generic. It hasn't been tailored directly for your situation. And the reason it hasn't is because we don't know everyone's situation on here. So we give you a broad overview. But I tell you what we will do, if anything we go over on here uh, hits a hot button with you, 
contact us at 301-577-6340 and we will craft a specialized plan tailored exactly to your situation. So please, thank you for understanding. Take the information that we're sharing today in contact and you know apply it where you feel it fits your needs. So thank you so much for understanding that. So Rita, I see just my buttons going off. Where are people yes. checking in from today? People are checking in from Odenton, Maryland, outside on her balcony getting her exercise. I feel good. We bringing her knowledge and she getting her body right. I, I'm good yes. with that. We got Delaware in the house. We got Fort Washington in the house. So I think we got Pennsylvania in the house. I'm quite sure we got the DMV truly represented here today. Yes. <laughs> And on Facebook, I know they are just, I know my girl always watches us from Washington State. So shout out to you. I appreciate you for joining us. So this year's theme for Financial Fed Friday is getting fiscally fit. Fiscally. Now, someone is checking in. They're getting physically fit. But we're talking about money on here. So we want to help you get fiscally fit. So let's jump into it. So this is the fourth quarter of the year. The year's winding down. And so we are still doing our fourth quarter check-in. And we want to look at where are we right now? What factors may potentially continue to impact our finances through the end of the year and, and beyond? And then we want to give you more things to consider moving forward. And so where are we right now? We're still in the middle of this pandemic. We have an election coming up in three weeks. Every, it's so much uncertainty going on right now that we wanna just right now offer you some suggestions and strategies to help navigate these waters, especially those of you that are getting ready to retire at the end of this year or at the end of the first quarter of next year. This is going to be some important information for you to, you know, just catch a hold of and give us a call here at Affordable Benefit Solutions and ask for your Financial Fed Friday team. Rita, you know who we didn't shout out? Is oh, no, we, we got, no, wait a minute, we got um, some New Orleans in the house. Ooh. Yes, we got New Orleans, and it looks like we got a Randall Savage, y'all, aka Jeremy. But we got <laughs> welcome I'm a in the house too. <laughs> we, got a, <laughs> we got a Randall Savage, aka Jeremy, in the house, y'all. <laughs> yes, yes. So just we're gonna just jump right on into um, the information right now, and shout out to Robert Bailey, our office manager always on here holding us down on Facebook. Facebook, look, check in and let us know also. So what do we want to discuss today? I want to discuss taxes in retirement. That is something we need to consider moving forward. And we're going to start right where the taxes originate, the Internal Revenue Service. And we're going to be looking at Title 26 of the tax code. But specifically, we're going to be looking at Section 401k. Now, for those of you that are thinking, oh, that sounds familiar, right? 401k. Most people, they don't realize when we look at 401k, they don't realize, Rita, that it's not actually a product. Most people think a 401k, their 403b, a TSP, IRAs, they're all guided under section four in the 400 section, section 401k. So when they see, oh, well, I have a 401k. No, you don't have a 401k. That's the section of the Internal Revenue Service code that you are saving under. And under this code, under section 401, Basically, what it tells us is that if you save under this section, which this is where most of the tax deferred savings is being done, because anyone that is under the TSP or uh, state employees for three Bs or 57s, you all fall under this title. And see, the uh, institutions were smart enough, like, hey, we're not even going to confuse people. We're going to name these uh, services directly under the IRS code because this tells us if you save under this code, 
we're going this code tells you exactly uh how it's going to be taxed while you're saving and then more importantly how it's going to be taxed when you get ready to take it out so it's not actually a product that you have you're saving under a tax code in the irs that determines how your money is taxed while you're saving and while you are taking distributions from it which is going to be important when you're in retirement now of course here on your financial fair friday your team here we like to let you know there are other options we think outside the box we like to bring you the information that we know you're probably not getting in other locations so in under this same section the same title 26 we here at Affordable Benefit Solutions, your Financial Fair Friday team, there's also another section, section 7702. Now this section uh, speaks directly to life insurance. If you save under this section of the Internal Revenue Service Code, it also determines how your money is going to be taxed while you're saving and when you withdraw it. So again, don't think of this section. Don't look at life insurance as, oh, it's only for death. No, it's not. If it was only for death, it would not be in the Internal Revenue Service Tax Code under how you can save. This ain't your grandma insurance we're talking about, right, Rita? Absolutely. So, <laughs> with these, absolutely. So under Section 7702 of Title 26, it lets you know that if you participate in specially designed policies under this section, you also can have tax-free tax -free withdrawals. And when you pass on, your plan is self-completing because guess what? Your heirs that you leave it to, it's tax-free for them also. So Rita, can you please go on and give them a little more insight into how the section 7702 under Title 26 benefits them as we think about heading to retirement? Yes, I would love to, but you just got to allow me to share. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. <laughs> oh, honey, please go ahead. <laughs> oh, goodness. You know, we like to have some fun here. <laughs> and so she was just talking about there's part part of the code um, with the IRS code is called sections section 7702. And there's an alternative, another way for us to be able to save for retirement and beyond having a vehicle that can allow you to have a death benefit. It has some other parts. And many people, when you think of retirement, you're thinking of may maybe different parts and how does it encompass everything that you need so one of the things that it does it addresses the structural risk and so it's flexibility in the ways that you can save i think the biggest part of this darling it allows you to leave a death benefit tax-free and many people what we know we've been in this business for i've been in this business 31 years in august and that they say over 43 million people either underinsured or uninsured and so we understand that that is a, a really big part of saving not just for your retirement but if there are some people who are relying on your income on you to help provide for them then that part of your retirement plan is still necessary the second part it addresses is the market risk i know some of y'all like me i'm not really a fan of the roller coaster ride my money go up my money go down my money go up my money go down we have a pandemic the money go up the money go down we got a new president the money go up the money go down and so this allows you to have reliable growth with the protection of there's no loss to your principal. So our clients for the last 16 years I've been doing these type of plans, nobody has lost any money. And so that's the beauty of it. You may not get all of the gain. You may not even earn anything if the people are losing, but you're staying the same. And I think that's the beauty of this. And the last thing that it addresses is being able to have some tax-free money. So Dar Darlene was just talking about that code. And that code says that under the 401k, 403b, 457, those plans allow you to be able to put money away 
and not have to pay taxes. And many people have used their retirement plan as a tax strategy. What I say, if you're looking for a tax strategy, you may not want to use your retirement plan as this one and the same. So let's look at what this looks like for us. So. You know, yeah, I'm always having some issues over here with this computer. And so we want to understand the impact of having tax deferred versus tax free in retirement. And so we're going to show you, it's like there's two ways to save and there's three ways to save for, 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 for money. One is tax, tax free, tax deferred, taxable. And so when you think of where's your pool of money, you want to be either in tax free, which is truly tr tr good. Um, because everybody wants some tax-free money, um, then maybe tax deferred and then taxable. So when you understand the impact of all of that on your money, we need to know how does that look. So let's look at this. So here's here's Darlene. It's me and Darlene. So Darlene is using her retirement plan. I'm sorry, you guys, my computer's getting a little dark and putting some power. So Darlene is saving on her job. She works here at ABS. She has a 401k and she's putting $10,000 away every single year. And she's excited because she has a daughter in college and she wants to make sure that she has enough money in her paycheck to pay for this college education. So she's pumped up about this 401k plan because she doesn't have to pay taxes now. So for 15 years, she dumps 10,000 into her plan. Because she's in a 25% tax bracket, Darlene is deferring $2,500. So instead of paying Uncle Sam taxes on that $10,000, because she's in a 401k, most of you guys have that, you don't pay taxes on that $2,500. So for 15 years, Darlene is deferring $2,500, which is a total of $37,500 that you can see here on the end. So at the end of her 15 years of saving, she's put $150,000 into her retirement plan, her account value now is $268,000. Now Darlene daughter's finished school, she's ready, she's ready to go start retire. So now she has an account and she can withdraw $20,000 a year. So now she's in her spending time. Up here, it was her saving assets. Now she's in that retirement phase. So Uncle Sam says, seven, Section 7702 for the 401k said, we're gonna allow you to have a tax break now. But in the future, we're going to want our money. And here's the thing, Darlene, that I say all the time. Many people didn't realize that the day they made a decision to join their 401k, IRA, 403b, thrift saving plan, that's the day we all made a decision to be in debt for the rest of our lives. Now, we didn't understand it. But this is a debt that everybody, you could be debt free. If you got a million, $2 million in your retirement plan, you have one of the biggest debts ever. And so Darlene now has to pay because Uncle Sam said, we gave you a break. It's now for, we need our money. And so she's going to withdraw 20 grand a year because she's in the same, let's assume she's in the same tax bracket, which we're afraid of because when this tax um, repealed in 2026, we don't know where it's gonna go, but based on what it looks like from everybody I talked to, we think those taxes are going up. So she's in retirement paying $5,000 a year. Over a 30 year time period, Darlene is gonna pay $151,000. Now I compared to just, she was saving for 15, let's say year 15 in retirement, she would have paid $75,000. So Sometimes what we think is that we're saving in taxes, we're really just delaying it for a larger pool of money later on. And so when many people tell us that we're going to be in a lower tax bracket, you have to analyze your streams of income. When you're working, you're working with one stream of income. In retirement, many of you will have three, four, five streams of income, and everything is based on your income, your Social Security. Um, you're going to get taxed based on your, your actual provisional. You can have your Medicare. It's based on your income. So not having enough tax-free vehicle in that stream is very, very important. And so in this case here, she tax deferred. She saved 37500 during her working year, but she has to pay 151 during her living year. And let's assume Darlene passes away. And that sweet godchild of mine named Jordan gets the other part of her money, then what her heirs get is also taxed. And so depending on their age, and depending on how much they get, if they want to take it all out at one time, they got to pay penalties. They got So it's a lot more to it. So we just want you to understand. Now on this side, if she had it in an IUL or a Roth, she may pay that $37,000 
but everything else in retirement is tax free. And so in that 77, in that section 7702, it talks about a lot of things that we want to make sure you clear. And yes, as she said, is life insurance. This is not term. Now we understand that code is talking about life insurance, being able to leave something to your heirs tax free. So let's be clear. And that code is also term insurance, which you can get a term policy for five, 10, 15, 20 years. We're not saying that it's an issue, but you need to understand there's no cash value. It's not designed for long-term. Me and Darlene just had a client call us two weeks ago and Darlene met her last week. Her grandmother had a term policy for $100,000 she got when she was 62 years old. 20 years later, her grandma is 82 years old. Her $100,000 policy that was 200 something dollars is going to $1,000 a month. Why? Because she's now 82 years old. And so we had to do all this work to find a product for her. And what it's costing her is double what she was paying for 40% um, of what she has, simply because she had term insurance. So understand that it is part of that code, but the one that allows you to have a tax-free um, vehicle and create retirement income is either going to be whole life or index universal, which we often call IUL. And so what it does, it has the power of indexing. What does that mean? It gives you the opportunity to enjoy and appreciate the market growth, but not the loss. So as we say, you're not taking that roller coaster ride. You're going up or you stand still. You're going up or you stand still. You're not taking the dips. And that is so powerful, especially when you're thinking about saving for your future. Right now, people don't know what to do, <laughs> Darlene, because if they put their funds in the fixed accounts, they're less than 1%. I know the G Fund is talking about being at about less than 1% for the next three to four years. So you take a risk of your, having your fund safety, but also not allowing it to beat inflation, or you put it in a risky vehicle and take the risk of six months before you retire. You just lost 30%. Can you afford to even retire if you went from a million to 700,000? If you went from a half a million to 350, those are real numbers when you're ready to walk out the door. When you 30 and 40 and they said ride away, that's one thing when you're in your 30s and 40. But when you're in retirement age, you're a year or two out, six months, you can't afford to ride in no way. You need to be on the beach, laying on the sand, knowing that you're safe. <laughs> <laughs> the, other, the other thing that is tax free, and that's the beauty of this, because what we're looking at with most of our clients when we're doing our income planning. Having a pool of tax-free money makes a big difference in what you pay in taxes, but more important, Medicare. I have a client, just by us converting some of their funds into tax-free vehicle, her husband, who's about to be 65 in three years, we're planning because otherwise he would be paying over $500 for Medicare. But by shifting these funds into tax-free, it's dropped down to the 144. Now that may not seem like a whole lot to you, but 350 a month, Assuming he lives 10 years, he just gave that money away simply because he had all of his money still in the tax deferred plan. And most important is a death benefit. It means that you get to leave your loved ones, those that depend on you, those that need, you know, you're married. And the, 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 the part about insurance is that people often forget, Darlene, it's one thing when you and your spouse are still living. What comes in the house is one way, but death changes how things pay out. Not all jobs, not all retirement plans are created equal. Not all income plans are created equal. And so it's important when you're married to understand one of the things that my dad died in 2009. He retired from the architect of the Capitol in 2005. And my stepmother was a SERS employee. He was a FERS employee. She was younger, he was older, they was in two different retirement plans. He was primarily social security. She was the old system. Planning for them was critical because he was 15 years younger, I mean, older, he had cancer. So for him, death would have been probably where he know he would leave my stepmother. So had we not had a plan in place for him, Darlene, where life insurance being, being a part of it, where index um, um, annuities being a part, my stepmother would have been in trouble because under her old retirement system, she didn't qualify for his um, Social Security. But most of my father's 75% of his retirement came from Social Security. So 75% of what comes in the house no longer exists because 
she doesn't qualify for it. So when you think of a plan like this, it's not just about the money. It's about what allowed my stepmother to stay in her house and not have to worry, to still eat, not on dog food and anything because we had a plan in place because who dies first also dictates what your future look like. And so without having a plan, without having the right strategy, that may not be the same for all of us. So what we do is that we help you. What can you expect next? For many of you, you just need somebody to help you analyze your taxes. That's one of the things we can do. You may want to analyze um, the IUL strategy versus what you're doing now. So my, my nephew was 27. He's an auntie. I'm saving the max for retirement. This was like five. This was in 2015. He's a, he's a techie person. So he, he does computers. He makes six figures. He's a genius, right? But he said he's given all this money to his 401k. What else can he do? So we looked at it. We let him keep his free money on his job. We took the other part and we just dumped $500 into an IUL. From 27 to 60, he's gonna pay five. He's not even doing any increases, darling. And at 65, we let him sit for five years. He's gonna start taking income. Now, our, our um, estimates say he's gonna have about 100 grand a year tax free. So he put $6,000 in a year that he had to pay taxes on. 30 something years later, he's getting 100 grand. I said, nephew, what if it doesn't do what we expect? What if this is off by 50% and you're only going to get 50 grand a year? He said, auntie, if I dump in six grand and I get back 50 grand, that's an 800% return on my money. I'm good. If I get, I'm good with a 500% return on my money and it's tax free. He had a baby two years ago. That not only just gave him money in the future, day one, he was worth 700,000. So where can you go dump $500 and day one, you're worth $700,000 at death. So now he has a baby girl in the event that anything should happen to him, he gets to pass that on to her tax free. So understanding the strategy, what's best for you, it depends. Come down, sit down with us, let us help you put together a plan. And you know, the, the, the biggest thing I teach all the time where I am my sister's keeper, y'all knew I do my thing for women. And I talk about having this aha moment and where the A becomes aware means awareness. So at some point today, some of you may just became aware of something because you didn't understand the codes. You didn't know this was possible. You're now aware. The H is that you have a heightened sense of wow, I think I like this. Many people, darling, stop at the, ah, like, wow, this is awareness, I get it. But the last part of the aha is another A, and that means action. So we can't just be like enamored about, ah, oh, this is good, I didn't know that. Put the A to it, put action, sit down, let us help you as a free consultation to see if it's a good fit for you. So have not just a ah moment, really have yourself a aha moment because it's really going to dictate and this is so important why because i love judge learn hands i wish i would have been able to meet him because this man was brilliant in his way of thinking now of course you know he also was the one who said it's not our patriotic duty to pay more taxes than we ought to but he also said there are two systems of taxation in this country one for the informed and one for the uninformed and let's just be clear, some of y'all are mad at the Trumps of the world, the Warren Buffets and the rich because they're not paying taxes. In the middle class, we're paying all the taxes. Is it fair? Absolutely not. But one of the things we learned, I've learned over the last 15 years of being in business and talking to people who are at another level, they're not doing anything illegal. We just don't know the system. So what Judge Learn just told us that there's two systems in here. You got to determine which system you want to be in, the one that's informed or the one that's uninformed. And newsflash, you're on this call, you're listening on YouTube, you're on Facebook, you have now been informed. It's going to be up to you to, to make a decision if you take your opportunity. And so Darlene's going to come back, but we want you to know that planning is bringing the future into the present so you can do something about it now. Just think about this. Planning is bringing the 65, the 75, the 80 year old you into the present place, the 30 to 40 to 50 year old you so that you can do something about it now. We're bringing our old self to a place today so we can start to prepare for that old one. And how do you do it? You got to have a plan in place to do that. And so hopefully this concept was easy. If you guys need more information, that's why we're here. And um, if there's any questions, we'll come back at the end. But I just wanted you guys to understand these codes were written for us. 
The problem is that we don't read the codes. We just go about what people say and we're not aware of what's out here for us. Darlene? Yes, and we, we have um, uh, some questions. So uh, we will get to your uh, questions. At, well, actually, let's just go ahead and answer it now before we move on because we're actually uh, just going ahead and closing down. So she, uh, one of the participants asked, is our AGI adjusted gross income the same or different when we're saving versus when we are withdrawing? And I would say, and Rita, please chime in as well, uh, it's going to depend because as Rita said, when you're working, you have one stream of income and that's your paycheck. Now, if you have done an excellent job you in uh, saving, you were able to save a lot early, had great returns, now in retirement, your AGI actually could be the same or more, depending on, again, your streams of income. Where are they coming from? Are they going to be tax deferred? Is it tax free? So uh, it's, it's going to really depend on what your retirement pools are, how you're going to be drawn down on them. That's why it's so important to sit down with us so that we can map out a strategy and see, will your AGI be the same or will it be more because you have more tax deferred money and how much, you know, the size of the pool of your money that you need to draw on? And I would say for, it just depends, but for a lot of people, if you got a million, two million, six hundred thousand in your qualified plan, remember, you haven't paid taxes on it. So if you wasn't to 70 and a half by December, Uncle Sam changed that to 72. So come 72, you're now going to be forced to have to, um, do I need to stop? You're going to be now forced to have to take this money. So we have a, a, a agent who used to work with us. Um, her and her husband had all of this qualified money. They had some inherited money. Now he retired making like 160. So his high three was good. They both got social security. She had a pension. Then they both had all of this qualified money. They're in retirement trying to find something to do because their tax bill is so high. Their Medicare is outrageous because with their qualified money, their RMDs were like 80 something thousand dollars. That's what Uncle Sam, they had to take. So can you imagine in retirement adding another 85,000 to your taxable? That goes before your AGI. So that's increasing your AGI. And so for a lot of us, some of us were already itemizing. So when they took away the exemption, we already laughed. If you're married, me and my husband, we lost about $10,000 worth of things that we can deduct because we were itemizing already. So that $12,000 may have been good to somebody who's single, didn't have anything. But if you already have a house and giving away for your tithes and your math, you're already itemizing. So you lost out on that tax break. And now you're getting 70, 50, 30, 40, whatever it is in retirement because you had your funds and qualified, which is another reason why we go back and say, let us do a, a free report. Let us do this taxing so you can compare what's best for you. Absolutely. The question, like, it, def it definitely does depend, but if you're a FERS employee, you have to really look at you because you got one income. In retirement, your system is designed for three. And if you do anything else on the outside, you could have another. I have clients that have four or five different streams of income, which is beautiful. But if you don't strategize it right, know which one to pull first, where to, it could be, it's great to have, but Uncle Sam is going to have his hands. Like, what's his name said? <laughs> I know y'all probably said this girl. Did she really go back there? <laughs> Robin, what's his name? Robin. Robin, Robin said he can, he, Uncle Sam going to have his hands out like cups. He looking for his pool of money. And he going to get his first. So, yeah. So, and I hope that answered um, your question in terms of the AGI. If it did not, please reach out to us so that we can, because uh, I know you mentioned in the example she used earlier, we assume, yes, in that example, they were still in the same tax bracket of uh, 25%, 25% when they were paying into it, uh, ta tax deferring their taxes, and then 25% when they were withdrawing it. Now, this whole tax situation is, really going to be challenging for us because as Rita mentioned earlier, also in 2026, the old tax rates are coming back. 
So really right now, under the new uh, the tax plan that was put in place for us, that took away our exemptions, it also expanded the tax brackets for the incomes. So where before under the old tax bracket, especially if you were a high earner, you may have been in the 28 or 32, and now you're down in 25. But in 2026, and if you're retiring now versus in 2026, and, and I know this is a lot until I'm gonna move on, but please reach out to us so that we can go over and craft something specifically specifically for you and address these issues um, that you have. So as Rita said, planning, which is what we're trying to help you do, is just looking into the future and bringing it into the present so that we can address these things now, look at the impact of 2026 and what that is going to mean and bring and do something about it now in 2020. Okay, so Rita, looks like, uh, yeah. So here at Affordable Benefit Solutions, hey, <laughs> this is real life, you all. Computer glitches and everything. We're here at Affordable Benefit Solutions. We are a full service financial solutions firm. We are here to help craft uh, different plans and programs to help you meet your financial destination. We help you with your retirement planning. That's what we're going over now. We just talked about the tax-free retirement planning. Also, estate planning. Not only do we help you uh, craft a plan concerning estate planning that will help most tax efficiently get your assets to your loved ones once you uh, pass on, it will also help give you peace of mind that your wills and wishes are in place now. Also, insurance services. We just went over a new concept. Life insurance is so much more. Next month is long-term care month. And that just goes back to, uh, we have on here long-term care insurance. Life insurance can also be crafted to include your long-term care costs and coverages. That's doubling down and saving you assets when you combine those two together. We'll get more into that next month though. So you definitely want to be here in November. Also just you know, some of your family members, this COVID is out here. We're losing our senior generation. Just having, you know, a regular $25,000, $30,000 burial policy. We do it all from A to Z. See what's best for you. Also, credit and debt elimination. We help you with that, too, because now, moving forward, some of your jobs, keeping it depends on how good your credit is and how much debt you have. So here at Affordable Benefit Solutions, your Fed Friday team, we can help you, as we said, craft a plan to help you reach your financial destination. So what's going to be right for you? We don't know. It depends. Reach out to us, 301-577-6340, so that we can help determine that for you. So contact us today, as I said, so we can map out a strategy to help you put all of the pieces together for your roadmap to retirement. So this is us here. That's our office. See, I'm right here now. I'm waving at you all <laughs> right now. <laughs> We're at 9,500 Medical <laughs> so call us, book an appointment with us so we can discuss some of the information that is on here. I love you all's engagement, asking the questions, so please call us. Thank you for joining us. This is the real thing. We give you the real thing. So, Where we're going to continue to give you the real thing. Any questions? Do we have any more questions, Rita? I don't, I don't see any online. Facebook, do you have any questions? It's now time. I'm here watching online. Did we answer your question? Was things clear to you? And of course, yeah. Um, probably should have put in the chat box for you to get an appointment. Um, oh, God, what does that mean? We'll, we'll post go. it on the side. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't want to give them something wrong, Rita. We're going to uh, post it. If you're on here, and thank you everyone for staying to the end. We know we went a little over. Um, we'll send it out to you in the follow-up email. You all are the best. Yes, you are.
Thank you, Facebook. Hello, Miss Joan, Miss Deborah, Tangi, all those that came on after we went to say hello to everybody. Have a fantastic weekend. I feel like fall is coming. We got rain and tomorrow we got whoo, a chill in the air. No, we went straight from summer to winter because this if this is fall, I, I um this is the coolest fall.